that an offended heart is the breeding ground for deception. Now, there is only one problem with deception. You know what it is? It's deceiving. The person who's deceived believes with all their heart they're right, when in reality, they're wrong. And that's scary. Now, Jesus calls false prophets wolves in sheep's clothing. He does not call them wolves in shepherd's clothing. Everybody's always looking for the false prophet behind the pulpit. But in my 40 years of walking with God, I've learned there's a whole lot more wolves in the chairs than there are on the platform. Now, wolves travel in packs. Everybody say packs. Now, you know what the goal of the wolf pack is? To isolate the sheep from the herd. There's actually protection for the sheep when they stay in the herd. Proverbs chapter 18, verse one says this. Remember I quoted Proverbs 18, 19 just a minute ago. Proverbs 18, verse one says, a brother who, uh, uh, what, is it, what does it say? Proverbs, oh, I don't even have it. I'm gonna have to quote it. It says, a man who isolates himself, seeks his own desire and rages against all wise judgment. Now the scary thing is the isolation occurs in the soul. You can be a part of a big church, you can be a part of a big family, but you're isolated because it occurs in the thought processes. And then Jesus goes on in the very next verse, verse 12, and says, and because lawlessness will abound. Now, let's stop and look at this word lawlessness. The Greek word there is anomia, which simply means this, not being submitted to the authority of God. You're a law unto yourself. When you have thoughts that are contrary to the will of God, the word of God, the love of God, you have entered into lawless thinking. Are you following this? He says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many is going to grow cold. Now, Jesus isn't talking about society. We would all agree that lawlessness abounds in society. However, he's not talking about society. He's talking about inside the church. How do I know this? Because the Greek word that he uses for love there is the Greek word agape. There are several Greek words translated love in the New Testament. You got eros, you got storge, you got phileo, you got agape. The only one that the world does not possess is agape. Agape is the love of God that is shed abroad in a believer's heart that Jesus said the world cannot receive. So do you know what Jesus is actually saying? One of the signs before his return is that there's going to be massive offense in the church. Those offenses are going to lead to betrayals and betrayals are even going to lead to hatred. Deception is going to run rampant because of the lawless thinking that is developed from the offenses. And because of it, the love of many, and we're talking about the love of God, is going to grow cold. And I know this for sure because of the next verse. In verse 13, Jesus says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. You do not say to somebody who is lost, who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you endure the race, you're gonna be saved. They haven't started the race. The only person you would say, endure the race to, is the person that's already in the race. Are you with me? So, let me say this. Let's just open it up with this. The person that can hurt you the deepest is the person that is closest to you. How do we know this? Because David says, it wasn't an enemy that reproached me. I expect that from an enemy. He said, it was you, my brother, my equal, my companion. We went into the house of God together and we heard the word of God together. You're the one that has done me wrong. Why is it that the person that can hurt you the worst is the person that is closest to you. It's because our expectations are higher on them.